What's up guys? Jake here, get back some Fatal 12. We put on our apron and we're gonna make some coffee or whatever. Also, I decided to turn off the voices. I felt really bored last time, so I feel like that'll be more entertaining. I don't know. If you have an opinion, let me know in the comments. Anyways, let's fucking go. I make my way to the kitchen and wash my hands and don my apron. You're a pro the moment you enter the kitchen. That's what my grandmother always tells me, and I believe it. I may be making these for my friends, but that's no excuse to do it half-hearted. That's what I always say. Anyone who orders a black coffee gets a nice serving of Full City Guatemalan beans. Full City's a roasting method used to reduce the acidic tones of the beans and make them more bitter. Great, that's what coffee needs, more bitterness. Beans from Guatemala are typically more acidic than others. So this kind of full roast is the perfect way to balance their acidity and bitterness. I prepare the siphon before placing the flask on an alcohol lamp. What? Are we making her an Irish coffee? Hey, hey! The key is making sure the flame's positioned just a touch to the side of the middle of the flask. Once it starts boiling, I shake it gently. With your bare hands, that seems really hot. Then wait for the beans to fall. Once they're on the flask, it's just a matter of letting them sit until they become fragrant. Up uh, here you go, Naomi. Oh wow, what a nice scent! I can smell it from here! <laughs> yeah, thanks, whatever. Naomi's comment makes me happy, but I've still got a long ways to go. My grandmother knows how to apply different brewing methods based on the bean type, for example. All I'm doing now is applying her instructions to make things easier for me. There's still plenty to learn. Look, I have a nice glass of milk. Alright, next up is Mao's iced latte, but instead, fuck her, I'm just gonna give her milk. You make this by preparing coffee first, then adding plenty of ice into the glass before topping it off with some milk. This way you get to see the coffee's blackness and the milk's white mixed together in the glass. Once that's done, I jam a straw in it and walk over to Mao with some syrup. What kind of syrup? Here you go. Tell me if you need more syrup. Did we put syrup in it in the first place? She just listed all the ingredients and syrup wasn't one of them, dude. Thanks, bunches. I make myself some coffee after that and take off my apron, wash my hands, and return to my seat. This is much better than what I make at home. You're incredible, Rinka. I mean, this is a fucking cafe, dude. My grandmother's the incredible one, not me, even though she didn't make that coffee. Whatever, that's not important. Speaking of which, does no one else work here? Mao dumps half the syrup into the cup before even giving it a taste and then pours the remaining half in. Hearing the ice clink as she stirs is nice and satisfying. Great, at least we know how to enjoy the little things like the sound of ice. No, well, I mean, it's a pretty small place. My grand handled the place on her own before leaving, so we don't need anyone else. Fuck you. She's taking care of a relative, right? Yep, she planned on closing this store temporarily, but I convinced her to let me keep it open whenever I'm not at school. Man, okay, sorry, I always point this out, but her hair's fucking cool as shit, dude. I'm sorry, and it gives off fire effects, which is neat. No, I figured I'd be able to make coffee, no problem, but it turned out making coffee is fucking hard. I knew we'd have to close the store at that rate, so I really went for it and managed to barely get approval right before she left. How long have you been running it now? Um, she left at the end of March, so like a month? I take a sip of my own coffee after answering. Definitely smells and tastes a lot better than when I first tried to make some. That's why you gotta get a Keurig, man. That makes it all itself. I'm used to drinking her coffee, so the fact I can answer with pride means I'm definitely getting there. Granted, I'm still a long way from her level. I'm not quite a coffee master yet. It'd be nice if we could make coffee as good as this for the culture festival, but I doubt it'd be easy based on what you said. Yeah, fuck you, making coffee's hard. Would they even be able to tell the difference? I can see most of the students dumping milk to counter the bitterness, just like me. I wouldn't be surprised, but that's not a problem. Plenty of parents and teachers will be there, so I'm sure they'll be pleased. I can only imagine how long it would take me to learn, considering you spent a whole month training under your grandmother, not to mention the other people who'd be in charge of making it during the day, too. Yeah, I doubt it'd be possible. You should just give up on all your hopes and dreams right now. The equipment doesn't come cheap either, and you can't borrow ours. Fuck you, we're not friends. Talk about relentless. I, I figured as much. We're probably best off relying on instant coffee. Whoa, 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 whoa. I said you wouldn't be able to make the same coffee we brew here. Huh? I can set you up with our bean supplier. Yeah, I got a bean guy. So you can get those on the cheap. The equipment itself shouldn't exceed your budget either. You got what, 10 cents? But making it? I mean, I'll ask my grand if there's a nice simple method for it. You just fucking crush the beans and put it in a cup, right? I doubt you'll be able to make it taste the same as here. But it should be good enough for the customers. Yeah, that's the spirit. That's the real entrepreneurial attitude. Fuck it, it's just customers. I can't say I'm totally confident, but fuck it, I'll try. After that, it's on you, dude. I wash my hands of this. I noticed Mal grinning as I finished my spiel. She probably expected me to say that. Naomi's obviously taken aback, but she quickly starts to nod and then responds, I, I feel bad for relying on you this much, though. 
Dude, if you're willing to put the effort in, then I don't mind. Besides, being able to teach you whatever my grand comes up with should help me, too. No worries, Naurin. People often get the wrong idea thanks to how she looks, because a girl with that hair has to be a bitch, right? But Rinny loves to stick her neck out for others, especially friends and family. She's really unique that way. Most people hate their friends and family. No, I don't. Fuck you. Anyway, you gave Naomi. Let me stick my neck out for you. There's a hint of concern in her expression, but she gives a conclusive response. If you're willing to, then I'd love your help. Sold. I'll call you after my grand gets back to me then. Thank you. I guess I'll pop in every now and then when I'm bored. Don't forget you're paying next time. Cheapskate. It's called business. With that out of the way, we spend the rest of our time together chatting. Probably about business. I have to help a few customers, but they don't mind me talking with Mount Naomi as long as I get their orders out in a timely manner. In fact, some even, even join in the conversation. Not just because they're regulars, but because they're creepy old guys. Oh, I mean because I've known them since I was a kid. They kind of feel like relatives in a sense, like that creepy uncle. Lion House has always had that homely feel to it. Both me and my grandmother consider it our second home, especially since we do in fact live here now. That's why I hope it stays that way once she gets back and starts living here again. Both Mao and Naomi leave just before 7 p.m. Wow, they stayed here a long time. Did they eat dinner? Fuck it, a coffee for dinner. We have a lot of penguins. I head up to my room on the second floor after closing and cleaning up the shop. D yep. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty excited about helping Naomi. Nothing gets my engine revved quite like making coffee. I enjoy making coffee as it is, so it'll be nice if other people end up feeling the same. Like I said, revs my engine. Knowing Naomi, she'll probably pick on it, up on it easily enough, although her clumsiness is a concern. That aside, what was that dream earlier all about? The one with the fire and the bomb! I felt okay once I started talking with Mao and Naomi, but I can't shake the weird feeling from when I woke up. I've never felt like that before. I can't even say for sure if I was actually dreamy. Oh look, my gearbook. Gosh, I love gears. Huh? What's that? Is that my gearbook? Man, I'm excited to read that. In the middle of telling myself to forget about it and try to sleep, I noticed a thick book on top of my desk. It's an auburn color with some gold leaf decorations on it. I assume these are gears. Good eyes, girl. Um, we're reading this gearbook. I love gears. Wow, someone cut out all the words. I take care when cracking it open, trying not to get it dirty. What the? There are no pages inside. Rather, there's a rectangular gap in the middle. This must be where people put their small books. I close the book immediately, having more questions now than when I spied it. Might as well message Gran about it tomorrow, considering it's already this late. Yeah, she always knows what to do about mysterious, hollowed-out books. Gran's good like that. Anyway, oh god. It's... Ah! Turn your phone vibrator down! That was insane! My phone vibrates after I turn the lights off and, I, and hop into bed. It's a message from Naomi. Let's see. Thank you for offering to help. I'm looking forward to this. She's a sincere girl, isn't she? I send a quick emoji in response, probably the eggplant emoji, then place my phone beside my pillow without checking to see if she reads it or not. I hope we silenced it, because we're going to get woken up when she sends back, like, the squirty emoji or whatever. The poop emoji. Huh? Hey, look, the main menu again. I'm pretty sure I've fallen asleep. But I feel conscious. Hey, that's how dreams work, actually. Except I can't move my body or even speak. Also how dreams work sometimes. Is this sleep paralysis? Or maybe it's a lucid dream. Who the fuck knows? So, dude. I hear a man's voice, but I don't know to whom it belongs. Look at you using good grammar and shit. A figure appears soon after, but I can't make it out all that well. It's someone slender with a vaguely androgynous face. A slender man, if you will. I can't respond, so I wait for him to continue. The... Mm, okay... Not the human I was expecting. See, fate has led you to this conclusion. Dude, congrats. Grats on dying or whatever. Haha, <laughs> no need to get depressed though. You've been given the rare chance to live again over the next 12 weeks, but after that you die again. Shit. Surprising, huh? Yeah. Fucking tell me about it, dude. Don't get the wrong idea. There's nothing uniquely special about you. Wow, thanks for the pick-me-up. It's all on the fate you carry. He spells this nonsense at me in a calm, almost rehearsed surfer-like fashion. Who am I, you ask? Oh, I'm also no one special. I'm just the one who watches you while you sleep. Under Norcom Norm circumstances, I'd never meet with anyone personally, but fate seems that your dreams will connect you to here, the clock room. Anyway, I plan no more introductions, but I think that's enough for now. Okay, bye. But before we put the curtains on this play, arise, whatever, let's kickstart your memory a bit. Bam! Kicked you in the face. How's that? The man disappears as soon as he stops talking. My consciousness fades away once again. Great talk. Wow, I learned a lot. Hey! I remember this. You didn't restore my memory, you just showed me fire. Flames envelop me. Powerful enough to flake the skin from my bones, in fact. Flames that produce enough smoke to smother my lungs. 
My life turns to ash. My inability to move, even my fingers, tells me as much. Yeah, everyone knows if you can't move, that's because you're made out of ash. What? 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 I hear someone shouting. Whoever it is keeps shouting over and over. The girls are eventually drowned out by the roaring flames that continue to spread. By the time the voice has been entirely drowned out, my consciousness has been extinguished. Get it? Like a fire extinguished? No? Okay, cool. Moving on. Cool, man. I love that dream. 10 out of 10. Ah! I wake up from my own uncontrollable scream. What an awful nightmare. I was engulfed by flames and also died. <laughs> I'm drenched in sweat. My breathing's beyond ragged. Even worse, I noticed a strange black blob blob my stomach. All the while wondering why I even had such a dream. Shit, that stomach cancer's back, my dude. Oh, it's you. This is our cat, Lethe. I'm not, I'm not, still not sure if my grand got it, if it was originally a stray, but it's made Lion House its home, it's also adorable as fuck. It's been here as long as I can remember, but it's still pretty lively despite its age. It's a wizard cat! This is the surfer boy, I bet! He's a surfer boy, he's gonna say see you lurfer boy. Maybe I was struggling to breathe because I'm lying on my stomach. Or is that why I dreamt when I did? It also set me on fire. It jumps back from the bed and skitters off when it realizes I'm about to get up. Must be nice to do whatever you want, unlike me, a high school student who has to go to school sometimes. They say cats are free spirits, and life's a perfect example. I don't know where it usually goes to hang out, but it doesn't cause any trouble here, and it knows where to do its business. It's a business cat. My grand always said that trying to keep a cat caged is about as pointless as trying to catch a cloud. In other words, she's had her fair share of trouble catching clouds. Hmm. I have myself a good stretch before I get ready to open the store. Today's a holiday, so it needs to be open nice and early. Cool, look at that, we made it. It's open moderately early. Just as I think I can relax a bit before the morning customers have left, the bell on the door chimes. It's me! Oh no, it's Miharu. Oh hey, it's the pretty girl from the demo. Good morning, Rinka. In touch this tall, stylish girl with legs up to here. The sun reflects off her long, silky hair, enough to make it seem like she's generating her own light with each and every step. She's also made of flashlights. That's Mishima Maharu for you. She's a classmate of mine and part of our to-be-avoided group. Really? People are avoiding her. That's weird. But in her case, it's more because she's practically perfect in every regard, so people find it hard to approach her. Yeah, nobody wants to be friends with the pretty popular girl. That's crazy town. Are you off work today? Nah, my shift starts soon. Uh, I should have figured, considering she's wearing her school uniform. She normally wears her own clothes when we're out in public, but I guess she can't be bothered to pick out something to wear for work. So she wears her uni- whatever, you know what, fuck it. Helps her avoid getting hit on by guys on the way home, too. Yeah, no one would hit on a girl in a school uniform, that's crazy town. Not sure how that works exactly, but hey, we just needed this girl to wear a school uniform, so fuck it. Thing is, she works way out in Akihabara. This is by Shinjuku, pretty much the opposite side of town. Why'd she go out of her way to come here? Does she need some? Oh, she is down to clown, my dudes. Just popping in to see your beautiful face. She is down to fuck. We didn't get to talk much yesterday. And since we're off for the next few days, I wanted to talk to you before vacation stuff. Right, yeah, thanks. What? I have to admit, there are certain facets, facets of Maharu I just don't get. For instance, she's obsessed with looking at my face. I'm pretty confident she has some other business out here. Yet here she is teasing me. It's hard to find the right response sometimes. Anywho, I'd hate to distract the other customers. Oh, it must be so hard to be so pretty that you fucking distract everyone. Fuck you, bitch. I don't need this. So I should be on my way. Time really slipped by as I waited for the opportunity to be with you. Alone. Okay. She's a little bit creepy, but also super hot, so it's fine. Wait, why wait? It's all just regulars in here. They wouldn't have cared if you just came when we made out or whatever. The weather's so pleasant today. I kind of enjoy taking in all the greenery, so... Okay, whatever, whatever. Fuck it. There's a park across from here that's flame famous all over the country. Apparently, it was an old samurai's garden that became a park after being used as a zone for experimental agriculture projects. What? What do you mean, experimental agriculture projects, like zombie potatoes? Not only does it have all sorts of flowers from here, England, and France, but there's also plenty of tourists who come by to see it. Are they also planted in the ground? Unfortunately, we're a bit out of the way to draw them in as customers, but a couple of foreigners do find us and stop by every now and again. We have a good view of it from here. Although I don't think it's the kind of thing you can enjoy for long. Mihara was some peculiar case, though, so who knows? Maybe she can. Maybe she likes looking at famous pretty flowers for a while. Unlike other people who hate nature, I don't even know what the implication is, dude. Oh, man, look at her. Look at her go. Well, my 
apologies for intruding. Do be sure to get some rest, will you? Sure, yeah, good luck with that yourself. What? Oh, before I go, you haven't forgotten our promise to go to Stardust Kingdom on the 5th, have you? Be sure to tell everyone the cafe will be closed that day. What is Stardust Kingdom? Is that the new Mario level? Oh, come on, as if I'd forget, I have a date with the hottest girl in school. Stardust Kingdom's a famous theme park out in the Chiba Prefecture. We've made plans to go there at the end of Golden Week. Fully aware it'd be at its busiest, but we don't care. We like a crowd. Let them watch. <laughs> Just making sure, considering your past record. What are you talking about? Anyway, see you then. Yeah, bye, or, um, um, see you later. Hasta la vista, baby. Miara leaves with a smile on her face. I had to stop myself from saying bye, because Maharu isn't fond of people saying that whenever they part ways. Well, Maharu can suck a dick. That's a thing people say. It's gonna happen. I get where she's coming from. It sounds like what you say for a long-term parting, but I think she's going a little overboard. Either way, I try to keep myself from using it when I can. Oh, God, that bell's so loud. Just I'm planning to brew some coffee for myself. Someone else makes their way through the door. Who could it be? Welcome. Oh, fuck, it's Naomi. In comes another friend. Can't say I'm surprised by her cute outfit choice. Okay, good morning. Morning, come in, come in. The fact that she didn't mention Maharu must mean they didn't cross paths. Or, and hear me out on this, Maharu's a ghost and that's why she doesn't have friends. And why she sends out light. She's a light ghost. Her heart is amber or something. I think something just fell in my apartment. It's probably fine. Naomi seems a little down though. Does she though? Look at this face. Does this face look a little down to you? Not only that, but I can tell she's had second thoughts about coming inside. Hey, I know what that's like, my dude. Either because there weren't any customers, or because she's conscious of the fact that I'm trying to run a business. So, dude. I still haven't asked my grand about an easy way for beginners to make some relatively good coffee, but I did ask her about a book. I don't know, I feel like that could have been one message. So hopefully she doesn't come back to ask about that. I have the option of teaching her myself, but I'd rather not do that with my own relative lack of knowledge. Yesterday, I, I think I might have left something here. Was it a book by any chance? A thick, expensive one with gold gears on the front and back? N no, I I'm fairly certain I didn't leave a book here. Ah, fuck off. Not sure why I asked when she never set foot in my room, while I was here anyways, so obviously she didn't leave it there. Turns out, it was her pencil case. She could have just sent me a message about it last night, but apparently she only noticed it was gone this morning. She lives here in the Shinjuku area, so she decided to take a walk and drop by to pick it up. Oh, my mom just messaged me. Guess I left it on the kitchen table. <laughs> Sorry about this. You didn't check the table before you left, you dingus. Well, that settles that. Naomi, useless as ever. So it's so Naomi to do something like this, though. She just fucking barges in, tells me it's not her book, and then leaves. Since you mentioned it, what kind of book were you talking about earlier? I described it. It has gears on the front. She jumps back to a topic I'm not expecting. Literally the one thing we were talking about. Oh, did I pique your interest? You certainly did! I'm curious because you said it seems expensive and I'm looking to rob you later. Makes sense considering you're into books, also robberies. Give me a second, I'll bring it down. Why is- what is this? Is she like a cat now? Not like I have any customers right now, clearly. And the street's fairly empty. I make my way up the stairs to get it. Here you go. Look at that. Shit, it's a book. It's an Auburn cover with leaf decorations. I can tell Naomi's impressed, judging by the hushed noises she's making while examining the cover, like this. <laughs> this trumps what I had imagined. It seems really old, does it? But it doesn't have the smell that older books do. Um, do you mind if I lick it? I mean, open it? Yeah, go ahead, but it's pretty fucking weird. How so? Just fucking open it. Her inquisitive look shifts to a confused expression upon opening it. Yeah, it's not really a book, right? Can't blame her. There aren't any real pages, just a big rectangular hole in the middle without any pages. You're right, this is weird. It reminds me of those old magical card books that were popular back in the day. What books are you talking about? Card books? Did you ever watch that one show where the girl would transform using cards and fight things? Oh yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Hmm, I mean, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I'm not an open book, dude. You can't tell me what I did. The book is just a glorified box for you to store the cards in, so... Wait a minute, aren't those cards at the bottom? I didn't notice at first because they're so thin, but yeah, look, a Japanese Charizard! Oh, dude, you're totally right. They share the same pattern as the cover, so I never even noticed. Also, I'm fucking blind, apparently. Can I take them out? Dude, keep your shirt on! 
Hmm, we probably shouldn't mess with it anymore. I mean, it might be my grands and they could be porn cards, you know? Let me ask her about it first. It's no regular book, at least. Don't feel bad if we uncover something she's been wanting to keep secret, like her Pokemon cards. That's why it's best to ask before we pry any further. Nami's hands fly off the book almost immediately after I say it. She immediately drops it on the fucking floor. This is awesome! I'm so sorry! I always get so carried away when it comes to books! I shouldn't have been fiddling with it so much! Dude, don't worry about it. Just stop smelling my stuff. You could tell she was entranced by it. I guess a book like this would fascinate anyone who's as into books as her. Would it, though? Okay, I should probably put it back upstairs. Who the fuck is this person? Well, you know, whatever. Before we find out who this mystery person is, I'm going to draw this episode to a close. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and be sure to tune in next week when we find out who this mysterious surgeon is. I'll see you guys then.